In this YouTube video, I give an overview and demonstration of a piece of vintage test equipment, the Model 802 Signal Tracer and Generator, manufactured by Electronic Measurements Corporation. Signal tracers are a type of electronic test equipment used for radio and amplifier servicing. When using a signal tracer, the service person would trace a signal from the antenna through each stage of the radio in turn until reaching the speaker or in the case of an inoperative radio, the faulty stage. The other common method of diagnosing radio faults was to use a signal generator to inject signals starting with the final audio stage and working back to the antenna until the fault was found. Signal tracers tended to be lower cost devices than signal generators, but by the 1960s, signal generators were preferred as the instrument to use for troubleshooting in part because they were also needed for alignment of RF and IF radio stages. Some signal tracers, such as the EMC802 described here, provided some signal generator capabilities in an effort to make them more useful and attractive as a piece of test equipment. Starting from the 1930s and into the 1960s, a number of companies made signal tracers, including Heathkit. Electronic Measurements Corporation, or EMC, was a manufacturer of test equipment, including tube testers. They were in business at least as far back as 1946, and were still making a tube tester in kit form in 1973. They were based in New York City. They were never as large as some of the bigger test equipment manufacturers, and from what I could see, they went more for the low price range of the market. Some of their products were offered in kit form. Their marketing slogan was, EMC gives more measurement value per dollar. Just as an aside, it can be fun to look up the addresses of old companies on Google Street View and see what's there now. The address I have for EMC of 625 Broadway in New York City is quite an old building and is almost certainly the same building EMC would have used in the 1940s and 50s when the equipment I have was made. The EMC 802 was built as a signal tracer and generator. As such, it had a few features beyond the basic signal tracers. For signal tracing, it can accept radio frequency or audio frequency signals, amplify them, and output them to a loudspeaker as well as a magic eye tube. For RF signals, a probe is used which contains some passive circuitry including diodes that converts the RF signal to a low-level audio signal which can be amplified. The RF and audio signals would normally be picked up in the stages of a radio but it could also be used for testing other input devices such as phonograph pickups and microphones. The magic eye tube indicates the relative signal strength as a green glow which closes as the signal increases in strength. A jack on the front also allows an oscilloscope or vacuum tube voltmeter to monitor the signal being amplified. An unusual feature is the noise test function which applies a high DC voltage to the unit under test and amplifies it. By jiggling the unit under test, one could detect an intermittent or noisy component if it made a crackling or frying sound. As a signal generator, the unit can produce an audio signal of about 400 hertz that can be injected into circuits such as audio amplifiers. It uses a neon lamp relaxation oscillator, so the signal is not a sine wave, but it does produce a signal that can be audibly heard. The output level and frequency are fixed. It can also produce a radio frequency signal at 455 kilohertz. This was the frequency commonly used for the IF amplifiers of broadcast radio receivers, so it could be used to test and align IF amplifiers. The output is modulated by the same 400 hertz audio generator, and the output level can be controlled. The 455 kilohertz output is fixed in frequency. The same signal could be used to test the RF amplifiers of an AM broadcast radio by listening for the second harmonic of the signal at 910 kilohertz, which is within the AM radio band. The speaker built into the unit can be directly accessed and used as a known good speaker to test a radio under test that may have a faulty speaker. Similarly, the audio output transformer and speaker built into the unit can be connected to a unit under test to replace its transformer and speaker for test purposes. Finally, the unit's audio amplifier can be used to drive the speaker of a unit under test to act as a substitute amplifier for test purposes. Looking inside the unit, we can see it's a pretty standard chassis design with point-to-point -point wiring both above and under the chassis. 
It uses five tubes of which one is a dual triode and one is the 1629 magic eye tube. When I recently tested this unit, the audio oscillator was not working. I diagnosed that the problem was the neon lamp. I replaced the lamp with a similar type, but one that had to be soldered in rather than fitting the original bayonet lamp socket. These magic eye tubes get dim over time, and this one is very dark. They are expensive to replace because tubes that are still bright are now quite rare. The 1629 tube in this unit is not as rare as some others and can be purchased for about $20, but I didn't bother replacing it since I don't use this instrument for real repair work on a regular basis. The unit does use a power transformer, but it's not grounded, and the 0.01 microfarad capacitor across the AC line allows enough current to flow to ground to get a tingle, so it's best if it's grounded when in use. I'll now demonstrate the EMC802 starting with some of the signal tracer functions. I'll use a signal generator, a precision E200C that I covered in another video as a signal source. Setting the input selector to audio, and connecting the audio input to the generator's audio output, we can hear the 400 Hz audio tone from the generator of the speaker. Volume is controlled by the gain control. This mode would be used to trace audio through the audio sections of a radio receiver or amplifier. We can also trace an RF or radio frequency signal. For this we need to select RF mode and use the probe connected to the RF input. The signal generator is set to produce a 1 MHz RF signal that's amplitude modulated and sure enough we can hear it. This mode would be used to trace a signal through the RF and IF stages of a radio. The magic eye tube would also indicate signal strength, but this tube is so dim that you can no longer see it unless you turn off the room lights. With an oscilloscope connected to the VTVM or scope jack, I could also monitor the signal being traced. The final trace mode is the noise test. This mode uses the audio input but applies about 115 volts DC across the unit under test. It's at a low current, but the voltage is enough to feel a shock if you touch it. The idea is that a noisy component will produce noise when jiggled. I can demonstrate it using a potentiometer that's a little noisy. You can hear the noise when the pot is turned. I'm not sure how useful this was in practice, but may have been useful occasionally. Looking now at the signal generator modes, the audio output jack produces a roughly 400 Hz signal which can be seen on the oscilloscope. It's not a sine wave since it's generated by a neon lamp relaxation oscillator. We can also feed it to the audio input and hear it through the speaker. The RF output can be seen on the oscilloscope. As mentioned, this is at a frequency of 455 kilohertz, which was commonly used for IF amplifier stages, and the 910 kilohertz harmonic that can be used to te test RF input of a radio on the AM broadcast band. It's modulated by the 400 hertz audio signal so you can hear it. There's not much modulation from what I can see, possibly because I had to substitute a different neon lamp in the circuit. There's no facility to change the RF frequency except to calibrate it slightly with a coil inside the unit. The test speaker jack allows the speaker to be used on its own or the output transformer and speaker. Or the unit's amplifier could be used in place of a radio's audio amplifier using the radio's output transformer and speaker. High voltage, just over 300 volts, is present on the B plus and P jacks when the unit is on. It's not at a high current, but enough to give you quite a jolt if you touched it. I bought this unit some years ago on eBay from a school that was getting rid of old test equipment. I also bought an EMC801, which I will cover in another video. 
I replaced the paper capacitors and some of the electrolytics. As mentioned, the neon lamp was bad and was replaced. I did some cleanup and rewiring of the RF probe. It contains two diodes, two caps, and a resistor, and demodulates RF signals to audio which it amplifies. It didn't have a manual, but I was able to find one on the internet, which has both operating instructions and a schematic diagram. It's dated 1959. I don't typically use the unit for fixing radio receivers, as a signal generator and oscilloscope are more powerful and convenient. But it is an interesting collectible item and sometimes comes in handy for testing radio or other circuits. The EMC802 is pretty typical of signal tracers of this vintage, although it has a few extra features. Build quality was not up to the same level as, say, Heathkit or ICO, and definitely not the higher-end manufacturers like HP, but it was likely less expensive. The manual was obviously made on a typewriter, and the schematics are hand-drawn. For the price it was offered, it was a good value for a hobbyist or small radio repair shop, of which there were many back in the 1950s. With its simple design, it can be easily repaired and restored even today. By the 1960s, signal tracers had begun to fall out of favor, although some of them were still offered even well into the solid-state era. My 1982 Heathkit catalog still has one listed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.